Hi, welcome to the Sensu Go workshop. My name is Troy, and I'll be your guide as we go through a series of lessons on what Sensu is, how it works, and how you can use it to transform your monitoring workflows. This workshop is a collection of learning resources designed to help new users learn Sensu. In this lesson, we will introduce the Sensu Observability Pipeline. You will learn about Sensu's architecture, its underlying data model, and how its unique set of features can be used to implement a monitoring as code workflow within your organization. This lesson is intended for operators of Sensu or anyone who would like a short semi technical introduction to Sensu. Let's start by sitting down with one of Sensu's founders, Kayla Paley, and developer advocate Jeff Spalletta to learn more about how Sensu works. So, Kayla. Earlier, I described Sensu as an observability pipeline. Can you tell us more about what that means? Sure. There are as many approaches to observability as there are software applications written, perhaps more. Some are assembled from a mishmash of glued together services. Others are monolithic commercial platforms that attempt to do everything from pulling the kernel to storing each log line and millisecond of system metrics into a massive vendor specific data lake. Sensu lands right in the middle of this scene by providing a smooth pathway for observations to flow directly from their origins to any number of destinations. Using a flexible API-oriented approach, Sensu pipelines chain many event processing components together in a model similar to Unix pipes. These components filter, modify, and route the data, producing alerts, storing metrics, and triggering automated remediations, and much, much more. That makes a lot of sense. So Jeff, do you think you could go into more detail about how Sensu works and what you can do with it? Absolutely. Within Sensu, everything starts with the agent. An agent is a sidecar process that's deployed alongside your code, which observes your running systems. It's publishing events which pass through a customized pipeline that filters, modifies, and makes decisions about how to handle those events. Most importantly, it uses the same kind of conditional logic that you do. With Sensu, you can ask questions and take actions like, does this event mean the whole system is down? If so, you can send an alert to PagerDuty and to Slack. And when the event starts showing that the system is working again, you can resolve that previous incident and then send an all clear message to Slack. Also, you can stop storing metrics until another incident occurs. It can do more than those basics though. For example, a more complex train of thought might be, hmm, these events seem to be related to our current marketing campaign. I bet they would be interesting to run some stats reports on. Let's filter them out and store them in the time series database for later analysis. With Sensu, you can do that. That's pretty cool. It sounds like Sensu is pretty versatile. In the past, I've used monitoring systems that are based on logs and others that are based around metrics. What data model does Sensu use? Sensu provides an integrated pipeline with a consistent data model. Operating like a control plane, Sensu's event-driven architecture gives you a flexible means by which to direct multiple streams of observations and metrics to whatever destination you need them to go, and transforms them into whatever shape they need to be along the way. It can do this because every observation in Sensu is contained in a single, flexible data structure, the event. Events can contain numeric metrics, key-value metadata, labels, and annotations, as well as any other payload of information that is meaningful to your system. Each component in the pipeline expects a stream of events as input and outputs a stream to the next component. This makes them both simple and powerful and easy to combine together into complex workflows, kind of like Unix pipes. Wow, using events as the data model sounds like it would solve a lot of confusion. I'm looking forward to learning more about that. So Caleb, getting back to terminology, another phrase I've heard you use a lot is monitoring as code. <laughs> what do you mean by that? There's a strong movement towards managing all aspects of the software industry in the same way that we manage application code. That means using automated workflows with configuration files stored in a versioned source control system where it's easy to collaborate and coordinate your work with others. Collectively, these are referred to as everything as code methods. Sensu is designed specifically to enable this kind of workflow for monitoring. We call this monitoring as code. What's even cooler is how Sensu was designed specifically to support the monitoring as code workflow. 
At its core, Sensu is an API, and the config files are just pieces of data that we read from and send to that API. This is all implemented in the Sensu backend. The Sensu backend is a service that provides the API and performs event processing. All aspects of the observability pipeline can be modified at runtime through this API. Operators can add new service monitors, modify the behavior of filters and handlers, silence noisy streams of data, or add new data platform syncs at any time without the need to redeploy. Monitoring configurations are defined in either YAML or JSON files, which are pushed to the API to build the pipeline. These configuration files can be stored in source control alongside your application code and can be tested, versioned, and managed like any other code file. This workflow takes the burden off the system operators by allowing engineers to self-service their own monitoring configurations with security and access controls at every layer. We're pretty proud of this design, and we talk about it at length in our Monitoring as Code white paper. That's awesome. I'll have to check out that white paper. So how do all these components get installed? Does Sensu need to integrate with some other infrastructure as code solution? Another essential component of Sensu is the runtime asset. Shareable, reusable packages that make it easy to dynamically deploy monitoring plugins. Sensu hosts a public repository of commercially and community supported assets called Bonsai. This service provides a real time distribution of assets to agents and backends based on the monitoring configuration people are using. Operators and developers can stay focused on those monitoring configurations without worrying about how to securely deliver monitoring plugins to the edge. There are hundreds of open source plugins available on Bonsai, supporting nearly every imaginable integration. Have a look around. If what you need isn't already there, the Sensu plugin SDK makes it easy to develop and publish new custom plugins. Okay, that was a lot of information at once, right? We covered a number of things, but now you should have a basic understanding of Sensu's architecture, data model, and the monitoring as code workflow. The rest of this workshop is a series of hands-on exercises that walks you through some of the essential features of Sensu in a sandboxed environment. We covered a lot of ground there, but the beauty of Sensu is that all of these features are already built into the platform, so you really don't have to think much about them or how Sensu works. As an operator, the majority of your time is spent interacting with YAML and JSON config files and running high-level commands from the Sensu Cuddle tool on the command line. The Sensu user experience is simple, consistent, and makes it easy to manage complex environments without being overwhelmed with details. Sensu is designed to be an ideal balance between flexibility and structure. But how does this compare to your previous monitoring system? As an intellectual exercise, consider the following questions about the monitoring systems that you've used before. What monitoring workflows did it support and how did it implement them? What did it make easy and what blind spots did it have? Which of those things are important to your organization? And why did you switch to Sensu? All right, if you're ready to learn more about Sensu, Check out Lesson 2, where we will set up a local workshop environment, which contains a full-featured Sensu deployment running on your laptop. We'll use that throughout the following lessons as our sandbox environment. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or stop by our discourse forums to chat about all things Sensu. See you in the next video. Definitely a movement towards blah blah. There's definitely a movement towards. <laughs> well, there's a pretty strong movement in the industry towards blah blah. In the industry towards blah blah. Oh. Blah blah and much more. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggle it. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Wiggle it. I'm fine. How do you sit in a comfy chair like that and not work? Sensu silencing subscription settings. Sensu silencing subscription settings. Sensu sold, settings. Sold down by the seashore. Now we're <laughs> <with the> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>